Welcome back to the Mind the Maker Workshop. I'm Gary. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made this Star Wars Galaxy's Edge Coca-Cola toolbox. I've mentioned before my workshop's quite small and I won't lie, it's a mess. I have tools everywhere. Now some of these tools I don't use very often and I need somewhere to keep them. I can't drill into the walls to hang anything up or to make storage. So I had to come up with another storage solution. The obvious thing was to buy a toolbox. I bought this Stanley toolbox for 15 pounds. It's perfectly functional. It looked like a normal toolbox, but I'm a geek and I wanted my toolbox to reflect that. So I started by peeling off the stickers and taking off any bits of the toolbox that would come off. I then rubbed the whole thing down with an abrasive scotch cloth to prepare it for painting. So I got a bit of a taste for spray painting stuff when I made the Alexa phone and I thought that this was another project that spray paint would be the best option for. First of all, the whole thing had a coat of grey primer. Then the latches on the front and the two flaps on the top were painted with metallic silver. I gave the rest of the toolbox one very quick coat with the metallic silver, just so that when any paint chipped away, it would chip away to the silver underneath and make the toolbox look like it was metal rather than plastic. I then gave the toolbox its first coat of a metallic red paint. Before I gave it its second coat of a metallic red, I used some Marskol by Humbrol, which is basically a liquid latex, and I applied it to a few of the corners and a few places on the toolbox where it would likely take knocks. This was so when it was fully painted red, I could peel off the latex exposing the silver and the slightly lighter red underneath. The last time I went to Disney, they were still building Galaxy's Edge, so I haven't had a chance to go. One of the really cool things they do there are the Star Wars branded soft drinks. And they have the Coca-Cola logo in the Coca-Cola font written in Arabesh, which is a language from the Star Wars universe. Once again, I used my trusty Cricut machine to cut this out of vinyl, and that way I could create a stencil to put it onto the toolbox. On the front, I wanted a smaller version of the logo, and although I was planning to weather the toolbox, I wanted that logo to be in reasonable condition. On the back, I wanted the logo that stretched most of the way across. I wanted this to have a much more weathered effect kind of like a ghost sign you would see on the side of a building that's faded away. So to create the logo on the back, I applied the stencil and I used a white primer spray paint. I gave it a really liberal application so that I would get a few drips and it wouldn't look quite as perfect. For the logo on the front, I again applied my stencil. This time I used a furniture paint from Frenchie and I applied this by using very small amounts of a paint dabbed on with a makeup brush. So I'd got my box painted a metallic red, I'd got all the extra bits painted a silver to give it a nice contrast, and I got the Coca-Cola logos on the box. If I'd wanted it to look new and sparkly and like it was fresh from the factory, I would have stopped there. But the point of making a Star Wars inspired toolbox is to make it look like it is from long, long ago in a galaxy far, far away, which meant I needed to weather it. Now where I'd put the liquid latex on, I peeled that latex off. For the flaps on top of the toolbox and the latches on the front, I used acrylic paint and a really old paintbrush. And I basically did dry brushing where I had barely any paint on the brush and then dabbed it on to create a stippled effect. I used a burnt sienna and a burnt umbra to give it a rusty effect. And then I used a metallic black, which just helped to wage the plastic and make it look like metal. I then set about doing the same to the rest of the toolbox. Now, usually when you're weathering stuff, less is more, but I wanted this to look really beat up. So as you can see from the bottom of the toolbox, I went really heavy on where it would have been sat on the ground in amongst the muck and the oil from all those pod racers. I used the same stippling technique to make it look rusty. Then I used the metallic black paint to give the whole box a real dirty feel. Once the weathering was done, it looked really awesome, but it needed something else. And what it needed was Greeblies. So for those of you that don't know, Greeblies is a word that uh, was coined by George Lucas and the guys at Industrial Light and Magic. When you see a spaceship or a futuristic prop on film and there are lots of bits stuck to the side of it to give it lots of texture. Those bits are greeblies. Anytime I take something apart, I keep it in a drawer just for makes like this. On the top, I've got a little metallic wheel that I took from a vintage projector 
Again, I've given it a rusty metallic look and I use Gorilla Glue to stick it to the top. So on one side of the toolbox, I've just got another piece from a vintage projector just to add some texture. On this side of the toolbox, I've got an old heat sink that I've made look nice and rusty. Then I've got my last bit from a vintage projector. And to make it look like it was spilling some oil out of the side, I've used some black paint and a straw just to get a nice effect. So the inside of the toolbox is untouched, which some of you might feel is a bit of a cop out, but being as I want this to be a functional toolbox, if I do work on the inside and put a load of tools in there, it is just gonna get ripped apart straight away. So I thought I'd save myself the heartache. While I was waiting for the glue on the Greeblies to dry, um, the toolbox was sat on my workbench, which is normal, it's where it should be sat. Um, unfortunately, it was a boiling hot day and for all intents and purposes, my workshop is a shoddily built conservatory on the back of a house and the paint started to melt where it was in contact with the workbench and it got stuck. And when I pulled it up, it ripped a load of paint off and it wasn't my only project to be affected by the heat in the workshop. So I've got bits to repair on a couple of other things and it was shit. And I know these things happen and part of the reason I'm doing this is to learn and you learn by making mistakes and I certainly won't be doing that again. One of the really crappy things about having PTSD is my moods and emotions are all over the place. So when something frustrates me, I get stupidly angry with it. Um, but you know what? I overcame it. I used my silver paint pen to fill in the gaps where it had gone right through to the plastic. And I'm lucky in a way. I wanted this toolbox to look weathered, beaten up, and like it had spent a very long time sitting on a planet somewhere, not being looked after very well. If I'd have wanted it box fresh, it would have been more of an issue. <laughs> but you know what? In some respects, it's getting easier to cope with unexpected things happening just just like doing a project like this and it's just really helpful and really worth it and just gives me a sense of pride that I haven't felt in such a long time thank you for joining me again in the Mime Maker workshop I'm Gary if you like what you've seen and let's face it how can you not please like subscribe leave a comment telling me how awesome this is and then show me what it's inspired you to do I will happily spend my days drowning out the screams of my infant son by watching you build cool Star Wars stuff. Look after yourselves. Bye. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how I made this Coca-Cola Star Wars Galaxy's Edge toy box. It's a toolbox.